Low Impact 20. I'd like to share some things I've been seeing during a decade when we've grown global connectivity and computational power by more than a thousandfold. And that's been the foundation for a move to cloud platforms of influence, intelligence, and invention, which I spend most of my time helping people understand so they can build a platform strategy. When they said that I should put myself in a place for this recording that inspires me, I realized that the map on the wall behind me was the best place I could choose. During what's now been my 13 years at Salesforce, I did something I never thought would come to define my job. The pins that you may be able to see in that map represent almost 100 cities in almost two dozen countries, where I've spent about 200 days every year out in the field, finding out how different industries in different cultures have been reinventing themselves for a connected world. Sometimes that meant judging a technology-themed reality TV competition in Mumbai. Sometimes it meant speaking on global finance at the London Stock Exchange. But it's always meant understanding people more than it's been about new technology. I didn't know that this would be my job when I started here in 2007. I was hired to do competitive intelligence in a world that some would say was largely created by Salesforce, the world of cloud platforms becoming the foundation of business. In these recent months of pandemic lockdown and recovery happening at such different tempos all over the world, those platforms have also been adopted at startling speed by government, education, public health, and as our new milieu for staying in touch with the people and the processes that matter to us. We've seen the key distinction between a platform and a product, that inventors and engineers can tell you what their product does, but only the community of co-creators can show them what a platform can be used to do. And those connected customer communities aren't defined by calendar age. I've had people in financial services, for example, tell me that their customers from 50 to 70 years of age are now using online banking to a degree that's never happened before. Just in my own extended family, everything from elementary school classes to quilting tutorials are turning to platforms like Zoom and Slack that are expanding out of the workplace into everyone's lives and even when this pandemic is considered to have passed, there are one-way doors that we've passed through and we won't be going back. We will expect 24-hour access, AI-assisted self-service, global knowledge of product availability and price, and accommodations from our employers and our schools and our other institutions to the idea that we'll increasingly live and work from where we choose. It's also crucial, though, to respect the need for advanced technology to support the people whose jobs will still be defined by location, whether they're stocking grocery shelves or keeping our lights on and our data flowing. We've learned a lot about who's essential in the modern economy, and I hope that this respect for people is a lasting effect. I was lucky to do my MBA work back in the early 1980s at Pepperdine's Grazia Dio School of Business with its particular emphasis on people. Literally the first and last classes in that program were about people and their behavior in the first class and about organizations and their behavior in the last. And that perspective helps me translate the force and effect of cloud connection, AI augmentation, and all the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution into what they mean for people and their needs and their desires. Looking at the companies that are defining our modern world, we should notice that they don't just improve the old ways of doing stuff, but rather they reinvent the ways we meet those needs, and only then introduce the technology. For engineers, this means the humility to realize that your customers will tell you what your platform is for. And for marketers, it means the humility to accept that your brand is defined by the conversations that your customers are having, often on those platforms, that it's all of our jobs to be good observers and respectful co-creators. Going forward, this means choices, Adoption of technology that helps people be better rather than replacing them. And management of data in ways that serve people rather than merely selling stuff to them. The certainty is that a global economy with a five generations workforce and continually accelerating change is going to require all of us to be reinventors.